3.7, derivatives of inverse functions. To begin with, we have, of course, a theorem for the derivative of, an, of the inverse function. So if f of x is a function that is both invertible and differentiable, okay, now then we might say let y equal f inverse of x be the inverse of f of x, of course. For all x satisfying f prime of f inverse of x not equal to 0 because we cannot divide by 0, the derivative of that inverse function is equal to this thing right here, the derivative of the inverse, is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Now we're going to apply that to a function that we have here. Okay, g of x equals x plus 2 over x. And then we're going to compare the result by differentiating it in a slightly different way. So first, we need to figure out what the inverse of x plus 2 over x is. I'm going to save you the, the college algebra work, okay, but hopefully you're good with these, and show you, go ahead and tell you that f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. That is the inverse of that g of x function. Okay, now the derivative, I'm actually working from the inside out here, okay, that's my inverse. Now I'm going to take the derivative of that. Okay, I'm going to use our power rule and it is going to be negative 2 over x minus 1 squared. All right, that is f prime of x. Actually, let's see if we can squeeze it in a little better. Okay, negative 2 there. So this means that f prime of g of x is equal to negative 2 over Instead of an x, we're going to have x plus 2 over x minus 1 squared, which is equal to negative x squared over 2. So that is the derivative of the inverse. So we actually take, we take the inverse function, take its derivative, and then compose that with the original function, and then simplify. And that is... That is our answer. That is what we were after, the derivative of that. Now, if I were to take the derivative of that um, function directly, I get the exact same thing. Oh, I skipped a step. I didn't do 1 over that. I apologize. So I need 1 over that function. 1 over that function. f prime of g of x. So my function is negative 2 over x squared. And that is the derivative of my inverse, f prime of g inverse. Oh, let me write that differently. f, prime, f inverse prime. So g inverse prime taking out my x. There's my answer. Example 2, use the inverse function here to find the derivative of this function. Now, recall that the cube root is equal to x to the 1 third, just by definition. All right, so the inverse of that function, okay, I'm going to go ahead and call it f of x, the inverse of that function is x cubed. The derivative of that function is 3x squared. Now we're going to take f prime of g of x, compose our x to the one third, so that'd be three x to the one third squared, which is three x to the two thirds. All right, and then the derivative of g, which is the one over so g prime of x is 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Now, if we were to apply the power rule to this and just say, oh, find g prime, that would be 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, which is equivalent to that. Now, the great thing about this process, and I just realized that I did not need that inverse there.
because we were given the original function. Is that this allows us to see what's actually going on later with some other more complicated inverse functions. So let's look at example three. Find the equations of the line tangent to the graph y equals x to the two thirds at x equals eight. Right, now, I'm not going to use the inverse function theorem for this. Okay, I'm just going to go straight to it. So let's call this our slope is the derivative of y evaluated at x equals 8. Now, our power rule is what I'm going to use. That'll be 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. And I'm going to evaluate that at x equals 8, which would be 1 third. That is my slope. All right, now I actually need a point here. This is my point A. Now I need f of A. That's going to be 8 to the 2 thirds, which is equal to 4. So we have the function y minus f of A equals f prime of A times x minus A. That is, again, the calculus version of the point slope formula. So y minus 4, and then our derivative was 1 third x minus 8. So distributing that 1 third, y, we don't want to do that yet, y minus 4, 1 third x minus 8 thirds, and then adding 4 to both sides y equals 1 third x plus 4 thirds. Now, as I said earlier, this logic helps us to see where some formulas come from, specifically these inverse trigonometric functions. Now, we're actually going to use the inverse function theorem to find the derivative of g of x equals sine inverse of x. And then we're going to compare that to what's in that table to verify that it does, in fact, work well for us. So first, our inverse function, f of x, is sine x. By definition, the inverse of sine inverse is sine. f prime of x is then cosine x, as we saw not too long ago, 3.5. Now we need f prime of g of x. So that would be cosine of sine inverse of x. Hmm, we need to play around with this just a little bit. Let's draw us a triangle, a right triangle particularly. All right, we have theta posed in our, superimposed in our triangle. So we know a few things. We know that sine inverse of x is theta. That is the statement that we have. So that means that sine of theta equals x. All right, now we're going to write that as sine theta over 1 so that our hypotenuse is 1 and our opposite side is x. Now, using the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean identities, this side must be square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, now, from that, we want to know what cosine of sine inverse is. Well, cosine of theta, cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. That is the square root of 1 minus x squared. But theta is sine inverse. This is a really common trig trick. So this is square root of 1 minus x squared. Which means that this over here is square root of 1 minus x squared and this leads us finally to we take the reciprocal to so show that the derivative 
of sine inverse. Let's put that right here. Derivative of that is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. As was stated in the theorem. Now let's take that definition one step further and apply it. Example 5, apply the chain rule to the formula derived in this example to find the derivative of h of x equals sine inverse of g of x. And then use that result to find the derivative of sine inverse of 2x cubed. Well, our chain rule would say this is going to be the derivative of 1, or of sine inverse, or of g of x. So the derivative of sine inverse is, as we just found, 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, our x here is g of x. Now we multiply by the derivative of that inside function we just plugged in. So that will be the derivative of just that generic function. Now let's apply that to sine inverse of 2x cubed. That would be 1 over 1 minus x squared, square root of, of square root of 1 minus our x here will be 2x cubed squared times the derivative of that function, which would be 6x squared. So this will be 6x squared over square root of 1 minus 4x to the sixth. All right, next, example six, find the derivative of tan inverse of x squared. All right, different function, but we can go back to our table and use that. The derivative of tan inverse is one over one plus x squared. So just tan inverse of x, uh, derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we can use the same logic here to say that f prime of x is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this will be 2x over 1 plus x to the fourth. All right, example seven, find the derivative of x squared times sine inverse of x. We have a product rule. We need to know what our derivative of sine inverse x is. We've used it enough, we should know it pretty well now. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that is going to be our, if we label these u and v, that is v prime, and u prime is 2x. So with our product rule, we have derivative of the first, u prime, so 2x sine inverse of x plus x squared times the derivative of sine inverse. So I'll write that as x squared over square root of 1 minus x squared. And there we have it. Example 8, the position of a particle is given by s of t equals tangent inverse of 1 over t for t greater than or equal to 1 half. Find the velocity of the particle at time equals time t equals 1. Well, we are trying to find the velocity at time 1. However, that is equal to the derivative of s, our position at 1. So we need to find the derivative of s. All right, now tangent inverse, remember that was 1 over 1 plus x squared. We have a composed function here. 
and then we have to multiply by the derivative of that function, that inner function, which is negative 1 over t squared. And if we distribute, we multiply that t squared around, we find that s prime of t equals negative 1 over t squared plus 1, which means that s prime of 1 is minus 1, 1 squared plus 1, which is minus 1 half. Therefore, velocity at time 1 is minus 1 half.